60 days ago, I built a mini lake ecosystem inside my bedroom. And throughout this 60 day process, I managed to create a self-sustaining ecosystem teeming with life, elusive predators, and even expensive rare fish. This ecosystem created loving relationships, dreadful enemies, and even the evolution of new life. So to show you how we started, let me take you back to day one. On day one, we started with an empty tank. And in order to turn this into a thriving ecosystem, we need some crucial materials. Starting with the base of this ecosystem, I'm laying a nice layer of substrate to provide a solid foundation for life. Now for the cave. I brushed around the substrate to make some room for it. This cave is going to add another habitat for our creatures to explore. Next up, I got these nice rocks to add some structure to the build. These rocks add a nice contrast to the build, but I feel like it's still missing something. Driftwood. It fits perfectly right here. Now for the plants. These plants are going to play a crucial role in our ecosystem, providing oxygen, filtering waste, and even adding shelter for baby animals. Now, the tank looks so alive. It's finally time to fill it up. This is probably going to take a while, so I'll just... With day one coming to an end, we are adding our finishing touches to the mini ecosystem with hopes of adding life soon. But first, we need to let the tank cycle. So let's add our secret formula and come back in a couple days. It's day seven and our tank is flourishing. The plants are doing a good job of producing oxygen, but the tank has a small problem. Algae is starting to cover all corners of the tank. So it's time to add the first signs of life. Here is a mystery snail. His name is Steve. And this is a horned nearite snail named Spike. These peaceful guys will help maintain balance in our ecosystem by eating the algae and scavenging any leftover remains. Spike has horns that protrude from his shell and Steve has these cool orange eyes. Now it's time to introduce our shrimp. I picked up these colorful crustaceans from my local pet store and one of them is carrying eggs. So over the next 60 days, we should potentially have baby shrimp. We are gonna name the mother Emily. Make sure to watch to the end of the video to see see Emily's babies, but it's not a guarantee with the threat of a looming predator. It's been a week since we last filmed. Our creatures have explored the tank, developed relationships. I was looking at the shrimp when I noticed this guy. I did not put this guy in the tank. He must have come in on the plants. When I looked closer, I noticed there was more. That got me thinking. Let's put a tasty treat in the tank and see what comes out. These bloodworms give off an aroma that spreads through the ecosystem, causing the snails and shrimp to follow the smell. The bloodworms were being devoured. But during the feast, one shrimp made a fatal mistake. He made his way into the cave, but to his surprise, he was not alone. With day 21 upon us, let me introduce you to our new predator, Crush. He's a dwarf Mexican crawfish, capable of crushing prey, but it seems he's missing a claw. Lacking a claw, a predator cannot make his way above ground, leaving the ecosystem above safe for now. Without the threat of a predator, relationships are strengthening. Soon, this ecosystem will have new life. A few days have passed and Crush is still in the cave. If he's gonna have any chance of getting out, we're gonna need to feed him. So I lowered some bloodworms into the cave and he instantly attacked the tongs. These bloodworms are going to give him the needed nutrients to heal. But his food source has attracted some other animals in the tank. A huge mystery snail has located the worms and is making his way down to the bottom of the cave. Steve is not alone. A brave shrimp has joined the feast. For now, there is peace, but as the worms become scarce, our crawfish might become desperate. This meal can be the difference between him escaping the cave or dying in here. Then the snail makes a fatal mistake. His tentacle makes contact with Crush, and Crush does not hesitate to strike. Even though he is missing a claw, he still has one healthy claw that can do major damage. But our struggle for food does not end there. The shrimp decides to make a move on the crawfish. Crush thrashes at the shrimp, causing the shrimp to retreat. Then the unexpected happens. Crush goes on the offensive and attacks the snail. He has a tight grip on the snail. This is looking bad. Thankfully, Crush decides to stand down as he feels he has made his presence felt. Steve lives to see another day. On day 35, I made a shocking discovery down below. It looks like Crush molted, but our crawfish was nowhere to be found. I decided to take a closer look. 
His moat looks like a copy of him. Crawfish, like many other crustaceans, shed their exoskeletons as they grow. After a quick inspection, I quickly lowered the moat back into the cave. Crawfish will eat their moat to recoup the calcium. As we make our way back to the surface, we can see something magical happen. Our slimy critters are mating and soon their population will boom. They aren't the only critters in this tank with a boom coming. This shrimp mama is almost ready to birth her shrimp. If we take a closer look, we can see tiny black dots on her eggs. Those black dots are actually the eyes of baby shrimp. This is an indicator that soon she will give birth to a bunch of baby shrimp. That is, if she makes it. Crush has evolved and has started to develop a new claw. Allowing him to escape his cave. Now Crush doesn't need prey to come to him. Crush, with the new addition of a claw, finds an oblivious shrimp scavenging the bottom. He uses his newly grown claw and it's all over for this guy. Crush's victory is complete. With his new claw, he's not just surviving, he's thriving in the aquatic world. In the wild and even in the confines of an aquarium, every day is a test of survival. Today, Crush has proven himself once again. The arrival of new residents adds a fresh dynamic to the tank. As they find their place in this ever-evolving aquatic community, I notice something different in the female guppy. It appears that she is developing eggs on her backside. This is the beauty of the glass belly guppy. We are going to be able to see the development of her babies. The ecosystem is thriving. Our guppies have found their home and have found each other. Their bond is growing stronger every day as they explore their home that will house their young. Not very far from them, hidden in the lush greenery, a mother is giving birth to new life. She has chosen the plants as the best possible place for survival. Nearby, another creature has the same idea. The shrimp have made their way into the plants to find safety from the crawfish on the tank floor. And soon we shall see the next generation of shrimp. Our predator has adapted once again and is now strong enough to make his way into the lush greenery. He starts to stalk his prey. Eventually finding some innocent snail eggs at the top of the tank for a tasty treat. But the eggs were merely a snack for a growing beast. The crawfish has wandered into shrimp territory. And within minutes he has found a meal. Speaking of young, our shrimp are looking a little different. The shrimp are no longer bearing eggs. That can only mean one thing. The eggs hatched and if we take a closer look, we can see a tiny shrimp that looks identical to an adult one. It's day 53. It's been a while since I've dropped some food in the tank, so I added some pellets. Everybody seems to be loving them, even the guppies in the cave. But as everyone was feasting, I noticed some strange behavior. Crush the crawfish, who seemed to be the top predator of the ecosystem, now serves as prey. They are bringing the fight to him, and he has no choice but to retreat. Could this be the end of Crush the Crawfish? With the final day of our project upon us, I could have never imagined that this 60 day process would have developed into such a divine ecosystem. Our lake ecosystem created unexpected relationships, the evolution of new life, and even the start of a new journey. Our glass belly guppies failed to reproduce within the 60 day simulation. I will continue to update you guys on them. But Crush the Crawfish has made a full recovery with two fully functioning claws. Make sure to like and subscribe because I have many more projects on the way.